Hey, y'all. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Oh, it is hot today. Oh, it is hot in Georgia today, y'all. Good gracious. It's hot. But I just came on here to talk to y'all. I want to talk to y'all a little bit about love and forgiveness. Love and forgiveness, they go hand in hand. Um, Some days ago, I made a post. Um, some of y'all may, may, may have seen it. Some of y'all may hadn't. But I made a post. And when I got up that day, I, I, I thought about something that was said. And I began to meditate on it. And meditating on that thought led to me getting angry all over again. And so my anger, I allowed my anger to cause me to take action. And that's why, that's how I ended up posting that post. But I, I uh, eventually deleted it. I don't, I think it was maybe up an hour and I deleted it. But my sister called me, my sister Keisha. She called me and she began to encourage me. Not only did she encourage me, but she corrected me too. She corrected me too. And we need people like that in our lives that can say, hey, 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 hey. They can correct you when you wrong or when you when they see you slide off the road or they they can they can see, hey, wait a minute, this this ain't you. You uh uh you gotta come back over. We need people to hold us accountable. And so when she was when she was uh encouraging me and correcting me, all I could say was yes, ma'am, because she was right. Everything that she was saying, everything that she said, I agree. She was right. And she said, take it down. And I did. I didn't fight with her. I didn't say, I ain't taking nothing. I took it down because I knew that it was wrong in the way. I knew when I put it up there that I ain't had no business putting it up there. But I allowed my, my feelings, my, my flesh to rise up. But I thank God for my sister. Because I needed what she gave me. I needed to be fed. I needed her to pour into me. I thank God for that. And days after that, a couple of days after that, I had a dream that I won't go into. But I woke up. When I woke up, I heard love covers a multitude of sin. Sometimes I wake up hearing scriptures sometimes a lot of times i wake up hearing songs and it sends me into a praise and worship but that particular morning i work up i woke up up and i heard after the dream love covers a multitude of sin in my dream, I will tell y'all this, in my dream, somebody had lied on me. And I was saying, oh, and, and the person that was telling me about, about the lie that was told on me, I said, now, why would I do that? I said, why would I do that? Why would it, what would I get out of that? Why would I do that? That was, that's what I was asking the person. I'm like, why would I do that? And when I woke up, I heard love covers a multitude of sin so um i want to start off by reading first peter 4 and 8 this is the king james version version above all things wait a minute y'all i cut my hair on i thought i could sit down here honey Woo! i'm gonna be a melted child please I thought I had cooled it off in him. Thought I could do this with the owl. Gas high. 
That's all right, though. <laughs> Woo! God provides. Thank you, Jesus. Anyway, I want to start off reading uh, 1 Peter 4 and 7. Turn it down. Ooh, and above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves. For charity shall cover a multitude of sin. I'm going to read it again. And above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves. For charity shall cover a multitude of sins. Now, I went in and I broke that scripture down so that I could understand it. I mean, I understood that, but I need to. Un I need it broken down even farther so I could understand it. And oh, it did. Folks got when they do that. They use our driveway as a turnaround. I probably don't use somebody's driveway as a turnaround too. But anyway, so, and above all things, have fervent charity, fervent charity among yourselves, for charity shall cover a multitude of sins. And this is, I'm going to read it. Um, this, is, this is how I broke it down. Okay. Y'all bear with me. Wait a minute. Okay. And above all things, have fervent. I looked up the word fervent. Fervent. It means passionate, heartfelt, wholehearted. Above all things, have passionate, heartfelt, wholehearted charity. What is charity? We know charity is love. Above all things, have fervent. Have passionate, heartfelt, wholehearted love among, among us in the company of our love for one another. So, above all things, have passionate, heartfelt, wholehearted love for one another. Four. For is a function word. So it's used to talk about a reason for something or a purpose for something. So for or because love or because charity, which is love, shall cover, shall bury, shall conceal. Cover means to bury or conceal. A multitude of sins. Multitude is a large number. Sins, wrongdoings. So above all things, have heartfelt, wholehearted, passionate love for one another. Because love covers a multitude of sins. Because love conceals and buries a large number of wrongdoings. Love covers a multitude of sin. Somebody can disrespect you. They can talk about you, don't like you, tell lies on you. But if you continue to show love, that person will eventually try to right that wrong. They will come to you. If you continue to show love and pray about it, it may not happen today. It may not happen the next day. It may take, take years, but that person will eventually come to you to right that wrong. We have to continue to show love and we have to forgive. We want God to forgive us, but we don't want to forgive others. 
God forgives us because he loves us. He forgives us because he loves us. Sometimes we feel like we have a right to hold on to things. And we don't. We ain't got no right to hold on to nothing. I don't. As many things as God has forgiven me for. I don't have a right to hold on to nothing. And you don't either. We don't have that right. It's like drinking. It's like drinking poison. And waiting on that the other person to die. Unforgiveness is poison that's in you. That person don't went on about their life most of the time. Ain't stunning you until God start whooping on them. Then they got to come back to you. But you you holding on to this poison. You holding this poison in you and expecting that person to die. When all it's doing is making you sick. It's killing you on the inside. If there is still any sense of revenge, you haven't forgiven. If you want to uh, get revenge, you vengeful, you trying to figure out ways how you can get them back, you haven't forgiven. Forgiveness is the only antidote for revenge. Forgiveness is the only antidote for revenge. If you see that person and you want to knock their nose up, you haven't forgiven. And that's how I felt that day when I posted that post. If I can be real with y'all, I want to knock somebody's nose up. I did. It makes you mad when you're being lied on and you know it. You know it's a lie. But he tells us, uh-uh. Pray for those people. We have to pray for them. If you keep bringing up what somebody has done or said, talking, it, talking about it to whoever will listen, Maybe you haven't forgiven. If you are a tit for tat person, you have a hard time forgiving. Forgiveness doesn't mean that you allow people to continue to hurt you, to abuse you, to use you, to take advantage of you. That is not forgiveness. Just because you forgive a person don't mean that you have to still deal with them. You don't you don't have to deal with that person after you have forg when you you don't forgave them that's it. You can hey how you doing and keep it moving. You don't have to stick around. You don't have to continue to allow somebody to use you. Just to prove that you have forgiven them. He said forgive. He ain't said be no fool now. He said, forgive, honey, not be no fool. Forgiveness, forgiveness may seem like a weakness. Or it may seem like you um you are letting someone win. But actually, forgiveness is a strength. It's a strength. Okay. It ain't no weakness. It is a strength. Forgiveness is not connected to weakness. It's not even connected to our emotions. The offense, the action may cause emotions. The offense may cause you to feel angry or hurt. 
but forgiveness is not connected to your emotions it's the action it's what they did that causes you to feel emotions forgiveness is a choice it's a choice even after, even after you hurt I mean, even after they hurt you or make you angry, you have the choice to hold on to it or to let it go. It's a choice. Even after they hurt you, even after you hurt somebody, that person have the choice to hold on to it or to let it go. It's an act of will. You have the power to control your actions. You have the power to control your actions. Your feelings change. Your feelings come and go. One day you feel in one way, the next day you feel in another way. So the hurt and anger may go away, but you still holding on to unforgiveness. It's not connected to your emotions. The action is, but forgiveness is a choice. Now, in Matthew 6, 14 and 15, Jesus said, If you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your, tra your trespasses. Meaning, if you forgive others their trespasses, those who sin against you, those who wronged you, your heavenly father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive them, neither will your father forgive you for your wrongdoings. We have to forgive. We have to forgive. We have to learn how to maintain self-control in the face of frustration. In the face of hurt anger being lied on we got to learn how to control how to maintain self-control we do in this world it is often deemed acceptable by some to tear people down verbally they get a thrill out of it not only the person who's doing it, but other people who's listening and watching, they like that. They like to hear somebody being verbally torn down. They egg it on. They laugh about it. Not realizing that God is watching them too. God see you too. Just because you're not, you're not the one who's doing it doesn't make you innocent. You laughing. You egging it on. There is no one being held accountable. There's no one to say, hey, 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 that's not right. That ain't right. Take it down. Don't say that. Delete that. You wrong. There's no correction. Correct me if I'm wrong. Correct me. correct me because sometimes we think we right but it takes somebody else to, to give us their perspective of it for us to realize no that ain't right I was wrong for that and if you wrong apologize ain't nothing wrong with saying I'm sorry That pride is something else. Pride will get you in a whole lot of trouble. If you wrong, apologize. And it can be something simple. I went uh, to McDonald's 
last one day last week or last weekend me and tay tay want to go to mcdonald's so i took him to mcdonald's and when i got to the uh wonder to order for tay she she was asking me something about the meal and i said and i said um i said yes sir and i just have a habit of saying yes ma'am and yes sir when i'm talking to somebody when i'm going through drive throughs i always yes ma'am yes sir i that, that's just a habit that i have and i said yes sir and and she said i'm i'm not a sir i'm a ma'am and i said oh i'm sorry and i kept on talking but when I pulled off, I told Tay, I said, I got to apologize to whoever that was. And when I got to the wonder, it was two of them up there. And I said, I gave her, I paid her. And I said, and whoever it was, who I called, I said, yes, I said, sir, to, I am sorry. I said, I'm so sorry. And one of the girl, the one of the girl, the girl that took my money, she said, uh, she said it was oh that thing was funny to me and and the other girl she just you know smiled and laughed a little bit but i said i'm sorry i'm so sorry i don't know how that made her feel i don't know you know if that's something she she uh she she struggled with people i don't know if if, if people teased her about how she sound growing up I don't know. I don't know if that's an insecurity of hers. I don't know. And you, we don't know. We don't know how people feel. So even her just saying, I'm a ma'am, correcting me, thank you. I knew, wait a minute, let me apologize. Let me apologize to her. And I felt good. That was all for me. Ain't nothing wrong with apologizing. When you wrong somebody, apologize. In this world, it's often deemed acceptable to get back at somebody. To seek revenge. When he tells us in his word, don't do it. People like that. Oh, oh, she said she going to get her back. Oh, he going to get him back. They like it. They eggs it out. They'll tell you, yeah, this is what you should. They'll help you plot up a plan to get somebody back. And, it, and God tells us in his word not to do that. There's so many things that's susceptible in this world that goes against the word of God. Revenge is unacceptable behavior in God's kingdom. That's in his word. His word says don't repay evil for evil. Or railing for railing. We can't lay railing for railing. Railing means insults. Insults for insults. He tells us not to do that. Somebody insults you, you don't turn around and insult them back. Bad as I want to post them text messages, I couldn't. We can't repay evil for evil nor insult for insult. No matter how indirectly it is done, we'll get on Facebook quick and, and insult somebody indirectly. Talk about somebody indirectly. It's still wrong. Other people might not know you're doing it, but God knows. God 
snot nose. And instead of reacting angrily, pray for him. This, this is for me. This is for me as well as y'all. I wanted to share it. Because I know I'm not the only one that feel that way. I'm not the only one that deals with this. I'm not the only one that's fighting with this. But I've been praying and asking God, Lord, anything in me that's not like you, remove it. Any hurt, any anger, any unforgiveness, remove it, Lord. I don't want it. I don't want it. I don't. I don't want it. And I definitely don't need it. I don't need it. We have to repay wrongs with blessings. We pay back wrongs with blessings. And the blessing is by praying for them. He tells us to pray for our enemies. Pray for those who persecute you and curse you and do all these things to you. I'm going to tell y'all this. Thank you, Lord. That day, after I deleted it, I was in the kitchen washing dishes. And I was talking to God. And God told me, he said, I showed you this. He said, I showed it to you. So why are you mad? <laughs> God say, I showed it to you. God showed me what was going to take place last year. He showed it to me. God said, so why are you mad? I said, Lord, I don't know. I don't know. I said, I don't. You tell me, you know all things. I don't know. That's how I talked to God. I said, I don't know. Help me, Lord. God told me that. God will show us things. And then when it happened, we be mad with the person. What is you mad for? Oh, we be God will show us what's going to happen. And then when it happened, we sit up there. Huh? Huh? He already showed it. He shows us things. He warns us. God always give us warning revelation and preparation he always warns us he prepares us and he reveals i thank god for that so we have to love and forgive i have to love and forgive all right I love, love, love y'all, and there's nothing y'all can do about it, okay?